Yo, what's up? Today, I want to talk about something interesting, maybe for some people, charging loss. You know, when I tested those plug-in hybrids lately, I assumed that the charging loss was 10%. And what is charging loss? Let me show you here, but the way I have this thing here. You see, this is a, char a car charger for my laptop. And when, when this one is working, when I plug in and I charge a laptop, you can actually feel that this one is heating up and you can f if you have something like this in your home a phone charger whatever you feel it it's hot why is it hot because electronics heats up when they're working this is charging loss and the same thing applies to an ev when you're charging it or a plug-in hybrid when they do the conversion between ac to dc into the battery there's a little bit of charging loss there and a little bit of loss in the cabling or whatever so, uh, you know, I assume 10% when I charge at 3.5 kilowatt. And I want to see if my consumptions, uh, my assumptions were correct. So I did several tests, lots of tests now. With this car, my Model 3, I have scanned my Tesla. I can tap into the BMS and I can see all the battery status. <laughs> so um, my first test was at Fortum. They have 22 kilowatt AC. And I, well, I can only take 11 kilowatt. This car has 11 kilowatt onboard chargers. This limitation is there. And then I look at expected remaining in scan my Tesla, how many kilowatt hours we have. And then I charge up for a while. Uh, we have, we want to charge for a while, not just five minutes, because we want to eliminate, uh, well, reduce the runoff error. And then after a while, I came back and I checked the expected remaining again to see how many kilowatt hour we have added into the battery. And then I check report from Fortum to see how much the charger delivered, or the actually technically the charging station, the charger is within the car. Well, okay, so first result is that um, we, uh, the, the char well, I, uh, yeah, it's in slightly incorrect, I say charger just to make it simple, otherwise the charging station is too long, okay, so excuse me, my French. But uh, you see that the, the, the charging station delivered 15.44 and then uh, the battery gained 14.1, so we have 91.3% efficiency. Okay, about 9% loss. So you see right there, it's roughly 10% loss. So close enough. Okay, what about uh, lower charging speed? So next test I did uh, at the public charging station. Uh, now I have this energy kick device, which also measures uh, energy delivered. But for some reason, it measures some weird stuff. Uh, I get wrong numbers. They're way too low or something. So that's why I use public charging station. Again, it's uh, run by Fortum. And that one only delivers 15 amps but uh, that is 3.5 kilowatt and um, okay since i was parked on public space i use center mode but i don't think center mode will suck that much extra power because um, center mode uh, is mainly sucking extra power to keep the car alive and the car was awake because it has to monitor everything maybe even run a little bit of cooling if needed so i don't think center mode should matter so uh, because this was fairly slow charging, I needed to charge for several hours to get a good, good enough number. And then I used electric scooter to just go to my home. This was a little bit, a, a few kilometers from my home. And then actually in the evening, sentry mode went off. So I was like, shit. So I quickly went there, back there to see what's going on. And there was no damage on the car. And then I didn't have time to look at the sentry mode. Uh, well, actually, I, I, I looked at it, but I couldn't see what was going on on the sentry video. So I was like, okay, whatever. So I gathered that data and you see that when you are charging slow at 3.5 kilowatts, the efficiency is lower. And why is that? Well, my explanation is that, okay, okay, because when you are charging slow, in theory, you should have better efficiency because you have less current going through the cable and the, and the charger. But like I mentioned, the car has to be awake. So there's a little baseline, which is about uh, 150, 200 watt that the car needs when it's awake. Maybe even more if it has to pump a little bit of uh, cooling or whatever. And that is probably why the efficiency goes down because you have to stay awake for longer, basically. So um, on the same night, I wanted to try uh, 32 amp charging. So I went to another location, again, run by Fortum. And um, that one delivered 30 amp. So close enough, seven kilowatt. But you know, because it was getting kind of uh, dark and I didn't want to leave the car. So I actually stayed in the car, but uh, I had to sit in the back seat because then the, f the screen will turn off and the screen might take 50 watt extra, which might, 
uh, corrupt the data a little bit. So we did that, uh, screen went off, everything fine. But what I noticed was that when I was sitting in the car, the fan suddenly started. And I could see in the, in the BMS that there was some kind of fan running, but it was not the cabin fan. So that was weird. And when every time I open the door, the fan will stop. And then I tried again and it started again. But this time I noticed that uh, you know, I was sitting still. It wasn't like, you know, you guys might think, oh, but you, you touched the butt sensor. No, 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 it wasn't that. It, it's not that, it's something else. It's running the fan. And that might also be the reason why on the previous test, the, um, uh, the, the efficiency was slightly lower because the, the car had to use energy to run some fans for cooling. I'm not sure, because it was, the battery wasn't that hot. Only a little over 30 degrees Celsius shouldn't trigger active cooling. So maybe, maybe the... Um, the charger, the onboard charger was getting a little bit hot. But why did the fan stop when I opened the car? I don't know, really. But okay, anyway, um, that result gave me really good efficiency because here we have good balance between not too high charging current versus fairly fast charging speed and not too high C rating. Seven kilowatt, well, that, it's about six something kilowatt into the battery. So that's, that's a, a little under one C, no wait, point one C. So very low charging rate there. So that one was the best efficiency for now. I still have lots of other tests. So um, the next, uh, actually the same night, I also went to uh, uh, Circle K and tried 50 kilowatt DC fast charging. Uh, what we, I noticed that uh, during that charging session, the state of charge was kind of high and also 7.5 kilowatt battery heater, well, it's, I think the, the stators were running. So that sucked extra power. And what else? Uh, yeah, so, um, and also, by the way, uh, we, sh we haven't really counted the, the, the energy needed to cool the battery because after I unplugged, it also had to cool down the battery. But um, fairly slow charging and you see the results. Wow. Uh, that, and you know, this, is, this is the efficiency that into the car. So, you know, when, when the, the fast charger also has some losses, you can see it in the fast charger. There's some fans running and there's some heat coming out of it. But fortunately for us, the charge point operator like Circle K or Fortum or Ionity or whatever, they take that loss and we only pay for what comes out from the plug. Fortunately for us. <laughs> but you can imagine that the, the overall efficiency is actually even worse than this. Hmm. Okay. And then the next test was at 2.3 kilowatt on Shuko. I wanted to see if you charge really slow, like some people do, uh, 10 amp, uh, how inefficient will it be? So I bought this energy meter from Biltema and I I've tried to charge at home because I didn't feel like going out to Fortum, uh, whatever again. But uh, after uh, actually a long charging session, I was, did the reading and it was weird. It was showing only 13 uh, kilowatt hour. It's, it's weird. So, uh, and there was also this power factor. I, I asked some people about how is this power factor and whatever. So I didn't get a clear answer, but uh, my closest ap approximation is that um, the plug delivered seven kilowatt hours. So that's the number I used. And based on seven kilowatt hour from the plug, we only got 5.9 kilowatt hour into the battery. So the efficiency here was really bad. And again, the reason why the efficiency is bad is because the car had to be awake for so long to keep this. So, you know, technically, if you charge a seven kilowatt hour, how many hours did it take? Yeah, it took almost three hours. But if you charge at seven kilowatt, it would take a bit, a little over an hour and to finish, right? And then the car will be sleeping for the next two hours. You know what I mean? Yeah, for efficiency. And then um, next test I did was I went to Vulcan. So we also, I would, whenever I had the opportunity, I would try to do a test. This was 800, uh, I mean, this is 400 volt three phase, but it was load balance. So I only received eight kilowatt that day. Other days I received uh, 10, 11 kilowatt. So um, three, three phase again. And you know, by the way, uh, why did I try another three, three phase? Because you know, in theory, three phase has lower current because you have you know, 400 volt. So uh, versus eight, uh, no, it was a seven kilowatt. So maybe this one should give you better result than the seven kilowatt uh, single phase, right? Actually not. I don't know why. So um, 
it has a uh, slightly lower efficiency than the 7 kilowatt AC. So, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I th we can trust the number from uh, Fortum, I assume. Uh, uh, the Fortum meters, they should have um, only 1%. One, uh, I think the law is 3% error, but most likely they have 1% error. So that you, yeah. If you have 3%, then you have to adjust it. So they probably have a little bit of margin there. Okay, uh, next test was uh, 350 kilowatts, Ionity. So I went to Elvirum and I did some stuff. Uh, that was actually a while ago. And I started with 45% battery. And I saw that during the charging session, the battery heater was active. 7 kilowatt battery heater. It needed to heat up the battery. And also it was charging at fairly fast speed. So the, the heat was also generated during that charging session. And the res result was um, surprisingly good efficiency. I was getting decent charging speed, but still, you see, this was this was better than the 50 kilowatt uh, charging session. Huh? Can you explain that? Well, I mean, my explanation is that the 50 kilowatt charging session had higher state of charge and it was charging slower and the portion of uh, battery heater or the portion of state of running was bigger compared to this one. Yeah. And then next test was again Ionity. Uh, that was after I returned uh, from a long trip. And this time I had warm battery and low state of charge. So it should be better. And actually this time the battery heater or the stators didn't fire up until 88%. So it's pretty good charging session, you know? So I was thinking, okay, no battery heater. The efficiency should be pretty good, right? Well, is it? Because when you charge at 180, 190 kilowatt, there is a lot of current going through the battery. So uh, there will be generated. So even though the, 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 the afterburners or the stators are not running, it will still generate heat in the battery. So the result for that one is, mm, okay, what, what should I say? 90%. Uh, okay, okay. Pretty good, pretty good. Okay, I'm not done with the test yet. I still have more tests. So I was thinking, how about if you charge at 50 kilowatt DC when the battery is nice and warm so, the, so that the battery heater doesn't run? So that's what I did. 25% state of charge, 41 degrees Celsius in the battery. I know that the battery heater will, will heat up the battery to 40 degrees on 50 kilowatt DC. That's why I started with 41%, sorry, 41 degrees Celsius. So I did a pretty good run here. The battery heater didn't, or afterburner, I should say afterburner. The afterburner didn't fire up until after 15 minutes and then I disconnected. I didn't want uh, I wanted to see how efficient it could be and that is by far the best result so far so you see as long as you don't charge too fast then the current is not too high and then you get good efficiency so if you want the most bang for the bucks charge at 50 kilowatt DC I guess if you want if you need a DC fast charge but uh, by the way this also highlights another topic which is that if you want to um, you know if you want to be um, green right you don't want to waste energy, then it would actually make more sense to, um, let's say you're going to a supercharger version three, uh, but you know you're gonna eat and you, you have to stay there 45 minutes. There is no other choice than to plug it in and then charge at 250 kilowatts. But then after uh, 20, 25 minutes, you have to move the car because the car is finished. But it would actually be better if you could tell the charger or the car, you, you say to the car and then the car will communicate with the charger and say that I'm only, I'm going to stay here for 45 minutes. You don't have to rush. You can charge at 50 or 60 kilowatt. No, maybe an idea to Tesla. But of course, the problem is that you will hog a charger stall. So, but uh, if as long, I mean, this would, this could work if you have Tesla supercharger because Tesla, they are pretty good with software. If you have Tesla supercharger, and uh, let's say, because Tesla knows about the whole charger status uh, at that site. So as long as um, there is no, uh, what do you call it, um, congestion, if there, if, as long as there is not too high congestion on that supercharger, you are allowed to do it, something like that. Hmm? Maybe in the future. Okay, but uh, um, I was not done with, what was that the last test? Yeah, it was last test, okay. but. Actually, based on this, based on this result, you can also um, find out. You know, if you look at the charging screen and you see this was uh, an, uh, an Ionic charging at a 50 kilowatt fast charger, you see that I received 22 kilowatt hour after uh, 31 minutes. And if you do the math, it looks like 
uh, Ionic was getting 42.6 kilowatt on average, but you can't neglect the loss. So how much loss did the Ionic have? Well, if you assume 10%, which is plausible, then <clears throat> it was only 38 kilowatt average. And then if you assume 5% loss, then it's 40 kilowatt. I'm leaning towards the 10% loss on Ionic at this, yeah, it's, it's, I guess we have to measure it one day, but this is what you have to expect. And also if, if you use heater while you was charging, then that one also goes parallel. So the power draw goes up and then it can look like you are charging faster, but the heater pulled the extra power. You know? uh, and also another thing you should notice that um, the Korean cars like Kona, Ionic, E-Niro, e the newer ones, you see the charging speed inside the car, but that one is actually from the charger. And then there's some losses. So um, the, you have to expect that there's about 5% at least that is lost. That's what you're actually getting. So when people claim that uh, Kona can take 78 kilowatt, no, it's you get about 72, 73 kilowatt into the battery. If you had a um, car scanner the, and you plug it in the BMS, you will actually see that uh, what, what did you actually get into the battery. But Tesla and e-tron, I believe, and also um, Taycan, when you see inside the screen there, that is what goes into the battery, not what the charger delivers. I remember I was wondering why my Model 3 was charging slow in winter in Lapland when the car was new. That was before I started using Scan My Tesla. And uh, what I concluded based on my knowledge now is that I was in Lapland and the charger gave me only 38 kilowatt for a while. But then suddenly it popped up to 45, 48 kilowatt. And the only explanation is that the battery heater or the afterburners were running, but then eventually it hit 40 degrees Celsius and then the afterburner shut off. And then suddenly the charger could deliver more into the battery. Yeah, I don't know if this makes sense to you or whatever. I don't want to explain it too much. I expect that most of you guys are experts. So this was a very long video about charging loss. I hope it was interesting. This is this is nerd level 1000. <laughs> yeah, but okay. Anyway, I think that's gonna be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.